Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp. RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Ridout Shear Zone in Ontario, with grab samples running as high as 32 grams per ton gold. A follow-up drill program to test the numerous targets located by recent groundwork will commence later this year. Please visit our website at rmroyalty.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Bob Mackin. He's an award-winning investigative reporter and publisher of the TheBreaker.News. Welcome to the show, Bob. Thank you. Already, the NDP government, it said it would be more transparent, more open than the liberals were, who were notorious for blocking every request for information you put in. How have the NDP been doing so far when it comes to freedom of information requests? Well, it's still early days, and they haven't followed through on their promise to enact uh, freedom of information law reforms, especially the duty to document legislation that uh, they were very much in favor of, as was the previous Information Privacy Commissioner Elizabeth Denham. Duty to document became a real rallying cry in British Columbia uh, after 2015 when the BC Liberals were found to be massed deleting email in a variety of offices in the Premier's office, in the office of Todd Stone, the Transportation Minister, which was where this, this scandal was centered. Um, and the, her response was that they should actually enshrine it in legislation that government should have to document uh, any substantial conversation, policy, program, uh, anything. They should put it down because the Liberals were not only deleting, they were also keeping records very shoddily, including on uh, Post-it notes. So that was the rallying cry. The NDP had that in the platform, and uh, we're, we're banging the drum on that on the way through the election. Uh, in government, they have slowed it down. Um, when I t- saw Premier John Horgan earlier uh, this uh, this fall, he was at a uh, newest Mr. Salmon Bellies game. I asked him about it directly, and he said, uh, too busy this fall, too many other matters on the docket this fall. They've got a variety of other democratic reform measures, which are steps forward, although none of them are uh, fully satisfactory to people like me who follows the democratic reform movement. They are taking steps forward, but they're not taking the step forward on the FOI law reform until sometime in 2018, hopefully in early 2018. There have been a few glimmers of hope along the way. I'm waiting for documentation about the change orders. The actual costs uh, changed both in uh, positive and negative for the Evergreen Line, uh, the $1.43 billion extension to the SkyTrain line to the Tri-Cities that uh, opened uh, more than six months late. They had major problems tunneling. This was an SNC-Lavalin project, and SNC-Lavalin has uh, attracted uh, negative attention all around the world for a variety of uh, corruption scandals and a variety of uh, criminal and civil prosecutions. Well, uh, the previous Liberal government wouldn't let me see the dollar figures on the change orders. There's something there that they didn't want me to see, and they really fought it hard. And then they uh, ran out of power uh, back in July, and the uh, NDP took over, was sworn in on July 18th. There was a new government lawyer on the case and also a new government on the case, and they changed course. They said, uh, no, there's no real reason in law to block you from getting this information. And so they uh, they were on the same page as I was. SNC Lavalin opposed it, but uh, didn't put up much of a defense, and I just got the... Uh, the uh, decision from the adjudicator recently, so I'll be getting that information sometime later this fall unless something else happens. So that that was one small glimmer of hope that uh, instead of digging in their heels like the previous government, this new government wants to show a little bit about the cost of some of the major infrastructure projects, although there are a number of other files that, that have uh, been slowed down and a number of other files which they still are uh, doing what the previous government was doing, which was... Uh, keep it uh, away from me. And there's also another file. I was trying to find out uh, the cost-benefit analysis of the decision to cancel the procurement for the Massey Tunnel Replacement Project. Now, that was interesting because when they announced the project back in 2013, uh, I asked for the uh, cost-benefit analysis, the business case for the project itself. And uh, the BC Liberal government back then sent me an invoice for $126 for only 60 pages. 
I eventually appealed that and did get the uh, did get the uh, uh, fee uh, rescinded, but uh, still fought for the the information and eventually didn't get it because they called it cabinet confidences documents that were in cabinet. So now we got the NDP in power. They're the ones running the government, and they're the ones that decided not to go ahead anymore with the bridge to replace the Massey Tunnel, and I asked them for the documentation that they used to justify this major decision not to go ahead with this project that some people oppose and some people uh, want, and they sent me a, a bill. They want me to pay $153 for uh, this information. They say it'll take them six hours to go and find, which is kind of crazy because the records that I'm looking for were only created sometime between middle of July and start of September when this was announced. They would have all been created on uh, on computers. They would be held uh, in government databases. The people that created the records, the report that would have been uh, put into cabinet or given to the minister and given to other people, uh, senior in the ministry and the project office, that report would have been paid for already because we're paying for people to write these reports But no, they want to charge me $153 to get a copy of the reports. They're making it as hard as possible. And what makes it uh, uh, even sillier is that the minister now is Clara Trevina, Minister of Transportation, who when she was in opposition was a vociferous opponent of BC Liberal secrecy. And Clara Trevina herself is a former journalist with the BBC and CBC. You know, here's someone who should be an ally of uh, freedom of information, of, of public uh, uh, transparency, of helping the media to find out what goes on inside government. And she's the minister and goes along with it. Uh, one of the common denominators, though, is the same deputy minister. The NDP has not fired him yet. His name is Grant Main. He was on the top of the chain uh, for the ministry, which didn't want me to see the every green line change orders. He's also on the top of the, lo- uh, the chain as deputy minister of transportation and wants to place a, a fee in front of me, wants to charge me money, a, a ransom fee is what I call it, to access information about the decision and how they came to the decision to uh, end the, the procurement process for the $3.5 billion Massey Tunnel Bridge. So, in other words, uh, they talk about legislation, but when it comes to actual action, they still dig in their heels just like the Liberals do. Well, yeah, they, 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 again, they have made some steps forward on, on lobbying reform, on campaign finance reform. Uh, they're, they're planning to move the, uh, next, uh, election, the next uh, fixed election to the fall from the spring. So, you know, some baby steps here and there, but they put together a whole suite of democratic reform private members bills, uh, when they were in opposition just a couple months before the election occurred in the spring. And uh, they have not resurrected those and uh, brought those all into the legislature, which they really could. Um, I know they've got a, a, you know, a lot on their plate, but if they really wanted to uh, be as uh, you know, new Democrats again, you know, they got, they got that they got Democrat uh, in the name of the party. Well, if they really want to be Democrats, and if they want, really want to bring a new style to governing in BC, if they really want to make things better, they would just uh, dust off those private members' bills from earlier this year and uh, put them in the legislature, one after another after another. But, uh, of course, this isn't really the way governments always operate. Uh, you know, the great journalist I.F. Stone, his uh, rallying cry was, all governments lie. And this seems to be something that uh, that happens quite often. Governments get into power and don't fulfill their promises, and some of the first promises to fall off the table are those uh, about being a better government, about being more transparent. And this is something that uh, the public has to get angrier about. And I think the public also has become angrier about it in recent years, but I think the public has to get absolutely outraged about this in order to, to exact change. There's no reason our government should be as secretive as they are. There's no reason, for instance, why... Uh, you know, cabinet minutes, for instance, are secret until 15 years after they're created. I've done some requests recently to get uh, cabinet documents from the first year of the Campbell Liberal government from 2001-2002. It's interesting to see what they were talking about behind closed doors there at the time. But why? Why do we uh, have a system that defaults to secrecy uh, when we should have be, be having a, a system that defaults to openness? I mean, it's better if we know what's going on inside government. They're the ones that are affecting our lives. They're the ones that are spending our money. 
Um, we, we don't want corruption and cronyism. We want government that works. And it seems in many ways that uh, to us and the public, this system doesn't really work very well. It's a broken system. Um, and there's too much bickering and, and backstabbing uh, on all sides. This is, this is not serving us well. And, and you can see the, the outrage that does happen when it does come to election time when uh, few people do vote. I mean, there's, there's sometimes an anomaly when you do have an election these days that has more than half of the registered voters voting. Um, but more often than not, uh, a minority of people are, are the ones that go and vote. And I think that uh, a lot of them are unhappy. If there was a, a box for none of the above, maybe you'd see more people getting out and voting and, and expressing their distrust and dislike of the system and those who are trying to uh, become powerful. We, we just had a by-election in the city of Vancouver. And uh, under 11%, it was 10.99%. They couldn't even get 11% of uh, voter turnout um, and so that that raises questions of whether the people that were elected or, or are elected in similar elections when turnout is, is disappointing if those people will really have a mandate to govern if most of the people in the jurisdiction did not actually support them there's there's a philosophical question there and I think it should be debated among the public about whether there should be major changes to uh, the way we elect people to public office we'll have more with Bob Mackin right after the break Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're chatting with Bob Mack and Bob still on the secrecy front. I feel what about the site C dam? 20% of the money that would have been spent on it's already been spent. Is it too late to pull the plug on it? And, uh, should it have the plug pulled? Oh, that's a good question. I can't, I can't say yes or no right now. What, what I can say is that, uh, this project is going to cost, or is costing British Columbians already, uh, if it does go forward more than what British Columbians spent on the entire entirety of the Olympics. Uh, the Olympics never really had an independent uh, uh, tally afterwards. The Auditor General never did a report afterwards, so it was disappointing that that didn't happen. But we believe that about six, seven, maybe eight billion dollars was spent on all aspects of the Olympics, from infrastructure to operations of the Olympics. Of course, some of that money was... Uh, was helped out by some private sponsors, but uh, a lot of it was uh, out of our own pockets to make the Olympics happen. Remember, Vanock, the Vancouver Olympic Organizing Committee, was actually uh, excused from the FOI laws by Gordon Campbell when it was set up, but we knew more and learned more about Vanock uh, through other ways and means, and it was, uh, funny enough, a more transparent organization than BC Hydro is right now, and BC Hydro is covered by the FOI law. This has been... Uh, 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 sad to see it, this happen the way it has, and there must be more uh, behind the scenes that we just don't know about because there has been this this overwhelming effort uh, by the BC Liberals, and the NDP hasn't really uh, opened the files yet either to keep so many secrets about Site C. Um, you know, I ask for monthly reports uh, from their, their construction contractors, and uh, they use every excuse they can to keep them away from me by even saying that, oh, well, the last uh, monthly project status report wasn't finalized, so we can't give it to give you the draft. But when they do give it to me, uh, it's, it's redacted so severely that most of the good information that we should be able to know about this project is kept away from us. Um, there was also uh, a, a a meeting that happened the night before the election actually officially started in April where the board for the Site C project and the board for BC Hydro itself met 
for 15 minutes and voted on a secret contract increase to uh, Peace River Hydro Partners, the main civil works contractor, which has the biggest contract ever led in British Columbia, more than $1.75 billion. And of course, more recently, we found out that that company went to BC Hydro at the end of September and said uh, they won't be able to meet the deadline for 2019 of uh, diverting the river, uh, a key uh, milestone in order to create this uh, very expensive dam, which is now pretty close to $9 billion. And uh, there's the estimates that it could go as high as $12 billion if it's continued, according to the Deloitte uh, report. And there's a very important report going to the NDP cabinet uh, started in November that will uh, give it a roadmap on whether to uh, decide to uh, uh, cancel the project as it is, uh, pause it, mothball it, or go ahead uh, full speed ahead. Uh, and the, the the project review that's under under the BC Utilities Commission auspices right now is something that really should have happened at the start. The the BC Liberals uh, did so deliberately to keep it away from the independent. Uh, uh, overseer of utilities in British Columbia because they were fearful that uh, they'd be thumbs down and they wouldn't be able to go ahead with this major mega project, a mega project that was going to uh, increase employment in a part of the province that needs more jobs, and also a mega project that uh, helps uh, various donors of the Liberal Party uh, get more work. Um, but the the transparency of this project is is most troubling that they won't publish a list of their major contracts and contractors. Uh, they, they won't give us a running tally uh, month by month of uh, how the contracts are going up and down, about uh, the, the cost overruns. There's even a lawsuit that was filed at the start of October by a senior executive uh, who was brought in by Peace River Hydro, Hydro Partners at the start of this year to get this project back on track. And uh, he's suing for... Uh, more than $4 million, which is what he was owed, because uh, they gave him a, uh, an agreement uh, over the next five years to be the, uh, the the overseer of the construction of the contract and the health and safety of the contract. And uh, his uh, court pleadings, which, uh, again, haven't been tested in court yet and haven't seen a response from uh, Peace River Hydro Partners yet, but uh, this uh, this executive who had experience on major infrastructure projects uh, came to the project and eventually was uh, fired, he says, wrongly fired for being a bit of a whistleblower, for, for pointing to various uh, safety uh, dangers that were happening on site and uh, got into a conflict with uh, other cohorts from the contractor and eventually uh, his job was, was ended, so he, he went to hire a lawyer and is suing for this now. So... If this gets into court, this could sh- uh, shed more light on, on the problems uh, it, within this project. Peace River Hydro Partners, in fact, was originally a, a, a triumvirate. It had uh, Samsung from South Korea and Axiona from Spain and uh, Petro West out of Calgary, but Petro West back in August uh, went into receivership. There's uh, some severe money problems there and uh, financial problems uh within that uh, consortium, although the other two partners have taken over uh, the, the slack. But there's, there's still so many questions about this, and this is what happens when there is a lack of transparency, when a project isn't put in front of the regulator, is, isn't put in front of the public to decide. Again, this really never was a BC Liberal project. This is a project that is the public project. The public should have been asked every step of the way because this is the future of BC Hydro on the line. Uh, this is uh, the future of our hydro rates on the line here. Uh, there, there are good uh, arguments on either side of the fence about uh, whether there should be investment in uh, alternative energy, whether it be wind or solar, or whether uh, the, a dam is the best way to go. Uh, you know, British Columbia is a growing province, and we'll need more power in the future, but uh, the, the big question is uh, how it will be paid for, and how much do we need, and how much to build? Uh, these questions should have been asked years and years ago. So I don't envy the NDP right now at all. Uh, they're being pulled uh, both ways. They're being pulled by the environmentalists, being pulled by the uh, the Green Party, who helped them get into power. They're being pulled by their union donors, who uh, want jobs uh, for for the years to come for their members. Uh, so what the uh, Utilities Commission comes up with is going to be very interesting. Uh, they did, of course commissioned that report by Deloitte, which I think is the best document so far that casts the biggest questions on BC Hydro 
um, and and has left us all with question marks about uh, you know why uh, the BC Liberals under Christy Clark didn't uh, put a pause on this and think twice before pushing the button originally. We'll have more with Bob Mackin right after this. Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. A work program is planned for our Finland property that contains diamond-bearing kimberlite. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ADD, and the Frankfurt Exchange, symbol 82A1. Please visit our website at arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Mackin. Bob, how good or how bad is the city of Vancouver when it comes to having an open and transparent government? Well, it's uh, failing, failing with uh, flying colors. Uh, still, Gregor Robertson was reelected in uh, 2011 and 2014. He says he's going to run next year, but then again, uh, uh, there's a lot of time between now and then, uh, about 51 weeks or so before that election. He got elected back in 2008 on a platform in which he promised a transparency. He promised uh, it because he acknowledged that uh, there would be a lot of new voters and that they, people wanted to change from the old NPA administration. So he promised transparency. And he, he said in no uncertain words that he will not let you down. He used those words. He will not let you down in his uh, uh, swearing-in speech. And all he's done ever since then is let people down. There was even a report in uh, 2016, one of Elizabeth Denham's last reports as Information and Privacy Commissioner before she took the similar job in the United Kingdom, that uh, pointed to major problems at uh, Vancouver City Hall in their FOI department on how it had basically been uh, politically corrupted and uh, it it had uh, become a department that was being adversarial to the media. It was uh, lying to the media, lying to the citizens about the information that it held. It was trying to use uh, uh, unusually large fees as offensive weapons to try to shut down FOI requests. Uh, it was uh, failing what is called its, uh, its duty to assist, that uh, public bodies are supposed to be, as uh, Elizabeth Denham said in her report, supposed to be conduits, not supposed to be gatekeepers. They're supposed to help us get information about our institutions so that we can better ask questions and hold those institutions uh, to account, uh, keep the feet to the fire. But uh, we've got a system now uh, that uh, permeates municipal politics, provincial politics, federal politics, that our governments are run like corporations, and that uh, communications is tightly controlled because uh, the politicians that uh, are elected to run the governments are on a permanent campaign. It doesn't matter where they are on the political spectrum, which party they are, they're all playing the same game. They're all looking forward to the next election and trying to figure out how they can get reelected instead of actually figuring out day to day how they can make our communities better and how they can make our governments more efficient. So city of Vancouver uh, has uh, become one of the worst governments uh, in Canada, civic governments in Canada when it comes to transparency. And uh, this is uh, Vision Vancouver. And a lot of the same people in Vision Vancouver uh, in that party uh, have wound up with jobs over in Victoria with the NDP. So I'll be watching that very closely to see how they manage uh, things over in Victoria if they bring some of their same bad habits from Vancouver City Hall to the legislature. Well, it's a running joke here on the Goddard Report about the Robertsons' lack of accountability to the media. I put in a request two Augusts ago to talk about the problem of homeless people harassing visitors on Granville Mall. And uh, so far, so every few weeks I put a request in, but I never get anything back. He's he's always too busy. So if you calculate how many millions of hours have passed since that first request went in till now, the mayor is just too busy. Maybe he's tuning up his bicycle. Maybe it needs a new chain, something like that. It's very interesting because the communications department the city of Vancouver has fluctuated. Uh, when I looked at the numbers most recently, about a month ago, they were close to 50 people in the communications department. That's... Uh, combined of City Hall and the Parks Board. So City of Vancouver government, almost 50 people doing various jobs in the communications department. That's uh, far too many for uh, City Hall. Other City Halls around North America have much fewer uh, people. 
Uh, now, Robertson's also an interesting one because uh, they've got so many communications people, plus the people that work inside his office who handle his communications, that sometimes they forget to tell us about things. Um, and sometimes, more often than not, actually, it's uh, on purpose. Like the time back in September where uh, we were surprised to find out he was on a trade mission in China. Uh, remember that. That was uh, the first full week of September, and they, they actually uh, put out a video to promote the candidate that they handpicked for Vision Vancouver instead of actually having a, a, an election for their candidate. They handpicked a candidate for the civic by-election in Vancouver. They put out a video, and it turns out the day that they put out that video, Robertson was actually in China. We found out uh, a couple days later, uh, thankfully, that Amazon put out its RFP trying to interest cities around North America. Uh, about its second headquarters, and the Globe Mail quoted Robertson and said, uh, you know, Gregor Robertson, who is in China on a trade mission, read that and thought, really? Uh, I didn't see any announcement about that. Did I miss something? And I didn't miss something. Uh, Ian Young from the uh, South China Morning Post, a uh, friend of his in China, saw Robertson at a train station in Shanghai and sent him a photo of him in Shanghai. So we had photo evidence uh, from one media outlet. Another media outlet had him uh, uh, interviewed and quoted in a story that he was in China, and there was no announcement whatsoever. I contacted the mayor's office on that Friday morning, and uh, they got back to me and, and said, well, it's, it's on the website. And I got back to them and said, well, you just put it on the website. Um, and still haven't got a response as to why Robertson was keeping his trip to China so secret. He was meeting uh, private companies in China. He was meeting government officials in Beijing and Shanghai. Uh, it's probably got to do with uh, the headlines in recent months about uh, about real estate in Vancouver and about other aspects in Vancouver that uh, not only people across the population, but people in the Chinese community themselves uh, are wondering about the influence uh, uh, of China on our politicians. And uh, here you have the mayor going to China and not telling us before he went. I think that, that says everything about Gregor Robertson and his uh, lack of dedication to that promise he made the people in 2008. He really doesn't care about transparency. He's not a transparent person. Uh, he'd rather run a secretive government, and uh, I, I think that could be his downfall next year. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you. My guest has been Bob Mackin, award-winning investigative reporter and publisher of TheBreaker.News, his website, TheBreaker.ca. You're listening to The Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. If you have any questions for our guests like Bob or for the show, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.